So according to Musk, uh, if you think about the timeline, on July 31st, he had another meeting, uh, one of uh, at least two, maybe multiple ones, with the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund. He posted the board, he says, a few days later on the nature of their conversations and the privatization possibility with them providing some of the funding. Um, however, he then dashed off this tweet, as we now know, uh, a few days later, uh, saying that funding was secured. Um, whether that was the case or not, how secure it was, he tried to explain yesterday. But the board, it seems, had no idea he was going to dash off that tweet, perhaps didn't think this information was ready for public uh, revelation. And so uh, that was news to them as well as to many investors. So are we to believe Azalea Banks in, <laughs> in thinking that he was scrounging for investors after he realized what he'd done? Well, thank you for bringing that up. And uh, if you look at her tweets yesterday and the write-ups of them, they suggest that he wasn't actually in his right mind. Uh, he was under the influence of something uh, when he posted that tweet. So uh, hard to say. I mean, She's I, pretty controversial. We she's should. controversial. I, and yeah. and, and, and from we have no confirmation that absolutely. that happened. Sure. Right? From what I read, uh, she's not always a reliable source. However, um, yeah, I mean, it stands to reason. I mean, one point I would make is I've been to Saudi Arabia. I've done a bunch of pieces in the last year on the public investment fund and their investments and their process. And I can say that from my understanding, it's a very laborious kind of multi-layered process. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is personally involved in much of this decision making. He's the chairman of that group. Uh, it looks as though the managing director, Yasser al Rumayan, uh, was Musk's contact. And he's obviously a very important figure at the public investment fund. Uh, he's running it day to day. But there would, I would guess, be many, many discussions uh, over an investment like this. And the other thing we heard yesterday was that there is no diligence being done on the Saudi side. They have not hired a financial advisor. There is not a term sheet. So we have kind of a paucity of these elements you would expect to see if Musk's tweet were strictly true. One of the other questions that I've seen raised, and I'd love to get your thoughts on it, is the fact that while the Saudi fund is quite large, a lot of that money is already dedicated to state companies, to Blackstone, to SoftBank, uh, and that there are questions about if it's, say, Whether they have million, enough liquidity. Exactly. Right. Exactly. No, I think that's a key point, Morgan, um, and something I've been wondering about, too. The FT had a good piece last week addressing some of this. Um, I think they were counting on some of the proceeds of the Aramco IPO, which you guys know has been sort of postponed and postponed, and now it may happen in 2019. It may not happen. It may not be necessary as the price of oil recovers. Um, so the thinking was that some of the proceeds of that would go into the public investment fund's coffers and enable them to do more and more. They may not have that capital at the ready right now, though. How about is there a way to confirm Silver Lake's involvement in this, Goldman's involvement, Wachtell's involvement? Working on that? Um, <laughs> interestingly, all these parties have kind of hunkered down. Um, even the public investment fund has said nothing. I mean, yesterday, the response I got from them was, we're, we're giving no comment, we're providing no guidance, we're just, we're not addressing this right now. Um, and Goldman and Silver Lake, so far, have been very, very quiet. And that's different in standard procedure where a, a firm retains these firms to do work. That's easy to figure out. Right. And again, I mean, the disclosure that these firms had been hired, I, I actually don't doubt it. I think it's probably right. Um, but at the same time, it was a reply to a tweet that Elon made. It wasn't even a tweet. As, as is a lot of his, the information he gives. It right. seems like he's trying to sort of put some legitimacy behind the initial funding secured and maybe take the heat off of whatever the SEC is looking into. I think that's right. And, and I have no doubt that these advisors will make a uh, game effort to, to explore this and try to make it happen if possible. Another point he made yesterday, which I think is probably worth noting, is that our, our back of the envelope calculations as in the media were that it would cost $66, $70 billion to do a traditional leverage buyout of the company. But in fact, the Times reporting, and others have pointed out, including Musk, there's another way to do it where you raise 10 to $20 billion um, through a tender offer and it wouldn't require quite so much I capital. just have a point about Elon Musk. So it's confusing because he's the CEO of this company. He's the chairman of the board. He's a 20% shareholder in Tesla, and he's making a bid to take the company private. I mean, it seems like a lot of sort of conflict of interest and a lot of questions that the board is going to have to deal with. Sure, a lot of moving parts. It's also, I believe, a nine-person board, of which his brother is a member. Um, arguably, there's not enough independence on the board. So that's another thing they're going to grapple with. Um, but, you know, hopefully with the setting up of this committee and the fact that they're going to run a real process, there will be more transparency, at least for those involved with the company, and more uh, organized communication so that the investment community 
can make more informed decisions.